I think it depends on who. For me, it makes no difference. For some people, I think questions in advance is good for them. For other people, it probably takes away a little bit of the organicness oh, 100%. of it. 100%. And I, uh, I, you know, yes, they're there, but it's kind of like a stepping stone into the next yeah. thing. And just to make sure, you know, and knowing the, the energy that you have, it's probably a good idea to keep up some sort of structure. Otherwise, we could end up talking about almond milk or who knows what. It's, I'm like a dog with three dicks, so don't give me any latitude because <laughs> you'll never rain. 100%. All right, shall we uh, get rolling? I'm, I'm, I'm impressed you got a coffee too. Most of these interviews I do, it's for my coffee page and no one has a coffee. Yeah, mate, so, I'm co- uh, coffeeed up. Nice. Is it a coffee though or is it a herbal? Yeah, it's coffee. Coffee. It's real coffee. Fucking got double it. shot. Got Good. it. All right, well, um, mate, take this as a compliment. I'm not going to give you an intro. I think anyone that watches this already knows a little bit about you or has seen, seen you on social media um, and, and has a little bit of an understanding of the, the motivational guru that you are. Huh. Um, so a little bit of a narcissist that I am, I'm going to make your introduction how I sort of found out about you, if that's all right. Sure. Cool. So um, obviously you having your fitness background and I did as well and I found you early on through your blogs like I'm sure a lot of other people did and I would um, have some nights at the gym where I would finish my last client at 9pm and the next day I'd have the next client at 6am so it didn't make sense to go home Uh, so I would sleep in the gym. And uh, anyone that's sort of in that industry or passionate about their industry will know that's, you know, it's just what you do, right? And, uh, and there's only so many movies and pizzas you can eat at 10 o'clock in a gym before you go looking at something brain um, energising. Uh, and thankfully yeah. I found your, your blogs and, uh, and that's when I knew that... Um, uh, there was a lot more to the fitness industry than just dumbbells and treadmills and, and whatnot. Um, and ever since then, you know, my journey has been, you know, and a big thank you to you and a big pat on the back for you. Uh, my journey has been, uh, it's so much more than just health. It's so much more than just finances. And it's all about where our head's at. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, you know, in, at least in this country and probably internationally, um, you're, you're one of the big, the big players there. Um, and the big thought thought provokers, if nothing else. Um, there is a question coming, by the way. So, oh. <laughs> no, just keep that shit up. That's awesome. All right. That's fucking great. That's uh, that's all we've got time for, actually, mate. I appreciate. Yeah, see you, everybody. <laughs> no, mate. I I appreciate that, and I've you know uh, conversely, I've watched you. I've watched both you, your business. You there, mate? Yep. Sorry, buddy. I don't know why, but when someone rings, it cuts us out. But, yeah, all you know, I've watched you, I've watched you and your business and your career evolve over the years. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been a, a joy to watch too. Because, I mean, we're all, we're all a work in progress, you know, and we're all, as long as we want to be, we're all evolving and we're all trying to figure life out and business out and people out. And, um, you know, in many ways, we're the same. And I think, oh, well, I definitely take that as a compliment. Thank you for saying. But, but I think the, 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 the best thing or one of the best things I like when I hear you speak is that you're not afraid to say that it's that you fuck up and that you fail and, you know, and that's, that might be probably why you've had successes because, uh, you know, you, people can relate to that and, you know, they, they get that it's not all Tony Robbins yeah. Look at look at me in front of a million people. Sometimes it's I'm fucking scared, you know, and I'm lonely, and I and I don't know what to do next. And I think anyone who kind of infers or insinuates that they don't fuck up or they don't make mistakes is disingenuous. And for me, it's not even being humble or self-deprecating. It's just a matter of being human and going, all right, well. Like, I think if some people can bypass some of my mistakes because I teach them something, then then I'm adding value. I'm adding value to their life. And that's one of my goals. And 
you know, the thing is that, and if we want to get a bit philosophical, you go, well, what's a failure anyway? A failure is just a label that we give something. So if we wanted to reframe it, we can call it a, a lesson. We can call it a growth opportunity. We can call it a bunch of things, but, you know. And, and the thing is never the thing, right? So if I set up a, a business and then it dies in the first six months or something like that, Sure, there's a lot of there's a lot of lessons there, but a lot of the lessons are nothing about yeah. the business and all to do with me. Hundred percent, and that's the. I mean, I think a lot of people. I know I am, and I think you are. You know, I'm an experiential learner. You know, I went to university and did a degree and all that stuff. But for me, my real learning, my real lessons, my real kind of evolution has just been at the coal face of doing stuff mm. and trying stuff and going. Well, that didn't work. And, you know, and, and figuring out as I go, you know, what's the model for me? And, and I think one of the things that, that people need to understand, and whether or not we're building a business or we're building our best life or we're writing a book or we're finishing a PhD or we're trying to get our body in shape or trying to create a brand and, and a profile, is that there's no single strategy. There's no single universally best approach. And so... It's trying to figure out what works for Matt, what works for Craig, and what, what are my results telling me? What's my life telling me? What's my body telling me? What are my relationships telling me? And in the middle of that, you know, pick and choose from people, but at the same time, figure out your own path and your own truth uh, and your own model for success based on your values. Mm. And, and that's not always an easy thing to, to just go and do, right? I remember being 20 years old and going, oh, I want to be in the fitness industry. And I did and I was passionate about it. But now I'm in my mid to late 30s and I go, well, I don't want that anymore. What, yeah. is, the, what is the next step? And then in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, like there's a lot of people out there that I've asked them the question and they, that they don't know what, what, their, what their journey is, you know. 100%. And there's people that... You know, I, I coach 50-year-olds who are trying to figure out what they want to be when they grow up, mate. And, and uh, you and I have worked with lots of people that have been grinding out a job that they fucking hate for two decades. Mm. Like, you, don't, you, know, you don't need to do that. And that's not to say that you can jump out of your grinding job into your ideal career in two days. But it's trying to, you know, get a little bit of perspective on, you know, where you are and where you want to be and, you know, how that transition might take place. And I know that we say, you know, when your passion's your career, you'll never work again, and that's all very cliche. But, but it is true that when you, when you do, you know, kind of merge your passion with your income, then it's a different place to live. You know, you, you just have a different internal reality about, about your existence. From a, considering we, we spend so many of our awake hours working, in inverted commas, Mm. Um, when all of a sudden you get a different kind of feeling or a different level of fulfilment or purpose from your day-to-day -day job, then, you know, things shift in a good way. Uh, yeah, exactly. And um, it's one of those things, you know, if you're complaining about working 12 hours a day, then you're probably not passionate about where you are. Correct. Um, mate, I knew you would do this. I, I knew you would do it. Do you know what it is? I've derailed you. If I derailed <laughs> No, no, but I wanted to interview Craig Harper. I didn't want the Craig Harper spiel. <laughs> so, seminar. Seminar. So what I'm going to do, if you're okay with it, you don't have to answer any of these questions that I've got for you. Yeah, no, you but I, wanna, but I want to know a little bit about you, right? So, sure. so going from the, the fitness world and the fitness industry that you did so well, why get into what it is you do now? So... Um, I think for me, bodies are only interesting to a point, um, but I'm more interested in uh, the people that inhabit them. So, um, you know, I think anatomy and physiology and energy systems and biomechanics and nutrition um, is, is part of what I do, but these days it's more about the internal stuff that drives the external. So I'm more interested in how we think and why we do things and, um, the way that we create our reality and the way that we give things meaning and the way that we find happiness or despair. Um, and, and I guess uh, on a really practical level, in answer to your question, 
I realised, and we've had this conversation many times and you've had this awakening long ago, is that you get to a point where you're working with people who want to change their body and you realise it's actually not about their body. You know, you go, this physical change that you're after is really going to be a byproduct of other stuff. So, you know, for many, and yes, of course, there's a physical aspect to getting in shape, you know, uh, energy in and out and movement and lifting and stretching and all of those things. Of course, there's a very practical physical reality to it uh, or component to it. But then what really makes the difference over the long term is all the internal drivers. So beliefs and values and fear and motivation and commitment and mindset and strategies and plans and resilience and all of that internal stuff. And, and then that spills out of just the body stuff into, well, the career stuff and the, the academic stuff and the, what does my life look like stuff. Relationships, so, money, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's where it came from for me. Got it. And, and, and did you, were you doing the hands-on, on the tools, PTing when you got that? Did you, yeah. did you go, this isn't helping this person? This treadmill isn't helping this person? Yeah, yeah, I guess, um, yeah, I did. I was probably only 19 or 20 when I was uh, I started to get my head around this notion of physical change being a byproduct of an emotional and psychological change and, and realising how, how intertwined uh, um, all of that And when I started to treat people like people rather than like bodies, um, doors started to open and, and I started to evolve, um, I, you know, even now at 53, I'm still figuring it out. But as soon as I started to realise, yeah, oh, yeah, I, I know, that. I look. <laughs> <laughs> Joking, you look good, That's mate. That's it. Done. Um, <laughs> but as soon as I started to get... As soon as I started to get my head around that, I became a better teacher and a better coach. And, you know, that's one of the things that I teach trainers now and anyone who works in the, the health, wellness, fitness space, you know, I'm always impressing or trying to impress upon them the importance of dealing with the person as a multidimensional creature rather than just, you know, a body that made up of bits and pieces. Mm, exactly. All, all right, so... Where you are now, and you yeah. know, I'm, you've always been like the, the 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 finish line for me, and it, probably that's not the right term, but I, I always kind of go, yeah, I I like what Craig does, and I like how he does it, and, and I've almost got to say to myself, but don't be Craig, don't be anything like him, yeah. because that's that's not who you are, and that's not you know you can't go down that same road out of respect for you one um ethically two but three for my own sort of journey i, I need to be um you know finding myself on this journey which sounds a bit wanky but um that that's kind of what it is uh the, the question there is what do you call yourself now yeah um i guess if i it actually depends i think one of the one of the limitations we put on ourselves is we think we need to come up with a single title. And I don't think we do. Whereas I need to go, oh, I'm a coach or, or I'm a media presenter or I'm an author mm. or I'm an exercise scientist. You know, like the truth is I'm a bunch of things and, and so are you. And so for me, you know, it really depends. Like my main job is that I'm a corporate speaker and that's where I make most of my money. But I also make money doing other things and I also find joy and fulfilment doing other things. But, you know, I guess if somebody said, forget the title, what is it that you do? I would say I help people change. I help people create positive change. I don't change for them. I'm certainly not the answer. All I am is a resource. But I think back to your point, Maddie, about you're careful that you don't become a version of me and all of that stuff. What I would say to you is that all of the things that, like the stuff that I teach, most of the, you know, when we talk about behavioural change and subjective reality and beliefs and values and resilience and clarity and it's certain, all out there all already, of that right? kind of, Yeah, it, it's not, I don't teach, I haven't invented 
I haven't invented anything and you haven't invented anything. And, you know, the thing is that the way that I teach and communicate resonates with you and some others and it doesn't resonate with other people and that's cool. So I would, you know, if my stuff resonates, you know, teach it the way that you teach it because it's not mine anyway. Tony Robbins doesn't teach anything new, but he's a brilliant communicator. Mm. You know, um, Oprah, you know, she doesn't teach anything that hasn't been taught. Like all this wisdom is eternal. It's been around forever. You know, there are some new concepts and there are some new uh, technologies in place. But in terms of just uh, wisdom around how people work, there's very little that's new. Or, or there's new ways of wrapping that up. 100%. Yeah. Like you, you think about something that you and I can relate to quickly, CrossFit. Now, I'm not pro-CrossFit or anti-CrossFit. But, you know, people, if we use this as an analogy, people think that it's, oh, this is this incredible new thing. And while I think CrossFit serves a purpose, there's nothing new in it. Mm. It's all very old movements that have been brought together to create a new product. So what we have is old things repackaged and we have a new product that's working commercially. And it's a really good product, especially if you own it. Mm. Um, but it's not a good product for my mum uh, because that doesn't meet her, you know, her needs. But and for a lot of people it is. It's exactly. trying to understand that. And she's not their market anyway sort of thing, much like, as you said earlier, there's a lot of people that aren't your market. Um, and I know that there'll be people who don't resonate with my stuff. Mm. Do, do you find, though, those people still hang around anyway just so they can be the haters? Yeah, look, some do. Do you Craig? I get, I get at least a message a day telling me what a fuckwit I am. Oh, that's just and me. I'm all right with that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not, that's really tiresome. And stop using all those pseudonyms. <laughs> I don't all, know those what I mean. <laughs> all those aliases. I know that it's you. I see the same in the press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you get a message a day from someone? Oh, probably... On average, I'd get a, an email or a messenger or something. I mean, I have, between my two Facebook pages, I have about 40,000 people. So mm. the chances are somebody's going to think you're a dickhead. And what? What, are they, what do they say? Um, look, it's anything from, you know, um, stop swearing uh, through to, you know, you're an arrogant dickhead to... Um, uh, over the years, I've had a few psychologists that think I'm trying to be a psychologist, mm. uh, you know, and, um, but, you know, and it's okay. Like, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, if people are vile and threatening and I'm not okay with it, but if people just think I'm a dickhead and they don't like me, you know, one of my lecturers at uni said to me, he was a really smart man, he had a PhD in philosophy and he said, if you don't want to offend anyone, uh, say nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. Exactly. And that's life. The, you know, the moment you've got an idea or an opinion, the mo and the moment that you succeed, uh, and not just you, but all your listeners and followers, the moment that you succeed, you'll piss somebody off, or somebody will be pissed off. Mm. And you know, there are people that love what I do, and people that hate it, and then people in the middle, and I'm okay with that. Mm. Do, do you think that having those haters is a, is a sign that you're where you want to be? <clears throat> Maybe. Um, I guess, I mean, I think, you know, I certainly am not famous, but I, I have a bit of a profile. Um, you know, and I just, I, I'm actually amused at that people take the time and energy. <laughs> That's right. Because to me, it's kind of like, Pointless. Yeah. I look at their thing and I go, "All right, have a Thank great you. life. See yeah. ya." I, 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 um, you know, from a because I understand human behaviour, I get why they do it. But as a, as an intelligent ish conscious being, I go, "Hey, for sure, go do something better with your brain mm. and your time and and your potential." Put like if you're sitting there just spewing out, "Hey, sure, I'm not the one," you know, it's like. You're probably not a stupid person mm. and, and abusing me, there's no upside. Mm. Exactly.
Um, mate, you talked about your followers and it's, uh, you know, it's really mm. impressive and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're proud of what you've created because it doesn't happen overnight. Um, what does social media mean to you and to your uh, career slash business slash profile? That's a good question. So, I mean, I've kind of evolved through a few things over the years from like the fitness guy to more broadly the health wellness guy to the motivation guy to, to uh, you know, these are not labels I'll give myself, but they're labels I've got. Sure. I guess, Maddie, when, um, when social media kind of, um, you know, happened in inverted commas, I, I didn't really get it. And, um, I guess I wasn't that interested and I didn't understand the potential of it. Um, and I get, for me, I, I, you know, I watch with fascination people sharing photos of their toe and their breakfast um, <laughs> and their cat. And <laughs> Have you been on my and there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that, but I just go, all right, wow. Um, and that, that's cool. I understand that for some people that's, that's uh, a lot of their uh, connection. That's where they go. Mm. For me, I see uh, social media as a resource um, and it is a way for me to share my ideas and thoughts and messages. Um, if I wasn't doing that, I probably wouldn't be on social media. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's, you know, I think it's a valuable resource and a valuable tool for somebody like me um, and I'm not an idiot and I, I appreciate the leverage and the reach that it gives me. Um, and so, you know, for the people that hate on social media, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated with that because, you know, whether it's Twitter or whether or not Facebook or Instagram, it, it's nothing more than a technical resource. And I think of itself, it's not good or bad. It's just a thing. You know, and so for me, it's been a positive thing, and I'm very, very uh, appreciative of it. Mm. When, when did it or start again? Did it? Uh, did you have that snowball? Like you didn't go from zero to forty thousand followers last week, right? Did it snowball, yeah. or was it a constant thing? Did you? Did, was there any element of sponsoring any of yeah. those? Yeah, I don't mean any disrespect by that, by the way. Yeah, was say that last bit. I, uh, the, was there, uh, well, was there any? You know, did you did you pay for any sponsoring posts or advertising or anything? And then I went on to say, I don't mean any respect by that. I'm merely just interested in, you know, what you no. created is really impressive. No, no, I've never. No, no, I've never paid for any of that. I've never. I've actually never friend requested anyone. So all of the wow. followers and friends that I've got. Yeah, I've never friend requested a person. So <laughs> no it's all not organic. Even no. <laughs> no. Not one person. Ever. So it's all real and it's all organic. I think in answer to your question, you know, here's the thing, you know, Gary V says, you know, we're we're day trading attention. And what, what we want is uh, in a good way for the sake of our business and the sake of our message, we want attention. But the thing is, there's a bazillion Matts and Craigs who want attention. Mm. And so my, my issue is, or my observation is that there's just far, far, far too much of almost exactly the same thing, right? Yeah. Even with my whiteboard post, um, uh, there's just people that take what I've written and basically repost it as their own. <laughs> and, wow. um, you know, new... Numerous times people have taken, literally taken my whiteboard post, cut my name out and then reposted it. <laughs> as, so that, that, and, you know, it's kind of a compliment. Um, sure. But I guess the turning point for me was, uh, was the whiteboard messages where for some reason that little, that concept seemed to resonate with people, mm. you know, and, and doing... I'm really interested in the video production stuff and, you know, I put up a video on Sunday night that I did with Tommy. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, one of my, as we record this, Sunday night is, you know, 36 hours or 40 hours ago and, you know, I think that's up to about 23,000 views or something and wow. that's kind of good. That's good but it's not mind-blowing. But, 
you know, I've done other things which literally I recorded just talking into my phone in two minutes that got 40,000 views in a day. Mm. And I, so sometimes there's no rhyme or reason. I remember asking you about this a couple of months ago now and, uh, and, and your answer was put out good content and then put out more good content and then put out more good content or at least that's what I took out of your, your response. Um, yeah. it's, it's as simple as that, right? 100% and, and original. Stop ripping off other people's shit. You know, think for yourself. Like th there's just too many um, puppets, especially in the self-help, personal development, health, wellness. There's just too many clones where mm. people don't actually learn their own truth and, and, and create their own content. You know, they just basically hear somebody else share something and then they turn that into, you know, and I know there's not, I know everything's been said, but at the same time, um, you know, there needs to be, if you're essentially doing what everyone's doing, it's hard to create a point of difference in a landscape or in a sea of online, um, you know, content. Well, why do you think you have? I think because... Um, I don't think a single thing. I think because the way that I write resonates with people, not always, but some people. I think I use, um, I use humour in a way that connects with some people. And I, can, I think sometimes I'm reason, I don't have many talents, but maybe one of my talents is to take kind of complicated concepts like subjective reality and make it quite understandable. Yeah. Albert Einstein says, unless you can explain something to a five-year-old, you don't really know that topic. Yeah, great. <clears throat> Such a good question. Yeah. Um, you said before about, you know, the cereal and the toe and the what I had for dinner and blah, 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 and there's so many of those. Um, I agree 100%, but, I also, but that's, as you were alluding to before, that's the same with this, you know, inspirational... Uh, space as well. Uh, in fact, yep. for me, it does the opposite. <laughs> yep. There's only so many times you can see Never Never Quit or something like that or, or a similar type Lorna Jane type post, no disrespect to Lorna Jane or the wearers of her clothes, um, but I sort of switch off, you know, yeah. and, and it's not until there is someone that stands out and you're obviously one of them um, where I will stop, you know, I, I call it, um, stopping the scroll is very, very powerful. If you can stop the scroll, um, mm. then it's something that uh, it has to be something that's going to stand out. Um, and uh, you know, you're you're big into podcasts as well. Um, I'm I'm assuming you've listened to a few of WTF podcasts with Mark Maron. Yeah, have you heard of him? He's one of the one of the, the, the bigger ones. Yeah, was yeah. He was also he was one of the early kind of pioneers in that space too. Sure. He was doing interviews on radio beforehand too, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, listening to one this morning and he talked about him on stage as a stand-up comedian and he said what he seems to think people resonate with the most is when he tells a story about himself where he looks like, uh, you know, he's the joker and he's done something silly and, and that's why uh, people can really, really, they get him. Um, yeah. And I think my, my point, my long-winded point is I think you did that well as well. You know, you're happy to put yourself down given that the message is, the powerful message is going to come out of it. Mm. Yeah, thanks, mate. I mean, yeah, I, for me, uh, that's not a particularly strategic thing. I just, like, I literally am the guy that wears the flannel shirt. I literally walk around in the cargo shorts and hate putting on a fucking suit and... And I just, you know, uh, for me, my life has been the lesson. And mm. uh, there's lots, of, you know, when I go, I've stuffed up lots of things. I'm not being humble and I'm not like, I just have. That's just the story. And I think that whatever you do, if you're a communicator, if your job is communication under whichever banner, whether that's comedy or personal growth or, you know, academic, whatever, um, you know, you need to be relatable. And if you're not relatable, then people, there's little value in what you're saying because it seems like you're disconnected from their reality. But yeah. when I talk about being a fat kid or when I talk about having issues with food, 
it's real. And when I talk about making dumb decisions or having businesses that don't work or being, you know, people go to me, oh, yeah, you're commitment phobic. And I go, yes. And they go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready for yeah, that. Tell, tell me some news. You know? All right. Well, you brought it up. Let's talk about that. Why at 53 are you still a single man? Um, I don't really want to be married. I mean, it's, that's, it's that simple, you know. I, I like being single and I like, um, you know, I, I'm normal in that I like spending time with people and, um, but there's nothing in me that wants to be married and that's no disrespect to anyone. My best friend's been married forever. My parents have been married for, you know, a year or two longer than I've been around and so I'm not at all anti-marriage. I just, I don't know, there's never been anything in me that goes, that's something that I want to do. And I also honestly don't think I'd be very good at it. Well, well, tell me about that. What, what, what is the thing or things about marriage that you, that you don't think you relate to? You know, I never, you know, I never discuss this, don't you? You know, this poop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not comfortable with this. Um, <laughs> That's why I asked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not that, like, and I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not anti-marriage at all. I, I just, for me, I think, yeah, I, ju I just don't, it doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't appeal to me to go, I, I'm going to spend forever with this person mm. and, but that's maybe because I haven't met the right person. Maybe that will change. But having said, yeah, I, I'm open. Like, I don't think that I will never get married. I don't think. But, you know, right now, I, like, I have a pretty rewarding and fulfilling life. But having said that, so I had this conversation with someone recently. I reckon if I wasn't Craig Harper, the guy who's all, always around people mm. and always you know, lots of people in my world, lots of conversations, lots of opportunities for connection, lots of socialising if I want it. If I was, you know, if I was back in the country where I grew up and I was a, you know, a plumber, <laughs> I'd, I'd probably be married and happily, you know. I think that because I get a lot of, um, you know, social connection and stimulation and, um, yeah, it's just... I, I enjoy the, the current reality of my life and I, I don't really want it to change. Okay. Uh, thanks for answering that question. I didn't think you, you would. <laughs> it's all right, mate. Um, it's the truth. Yeah. <clears throat> Tell me about where you are now with your speaking and you know you're 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 an, an awesome speaker i've seen you speak a number of times and i can't wait to see you again in briz which i would definitely want to chat about before we finish up um did you ever think Perfect. you'd be you'd be speaking to to this many people did you ever think you would be such a good speaker like was it always in the on the cards for you um did I, uh, yeah I, probably not no i probably um I probably didn't think that I would, you know, like on Saturday in Melbourne, we had about 550 500 people at my people. workshop. Awesome. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's very humbling when like we were at Deakin university down here and I didn't, I didn't see the audience. I arrived like it was at two. I got to the venue at about three minutes to two mm. and it's funny to walk in and see 550 people who have paid money to see you. Mm. And you, this is, it's like exhilarating and terrifying. You go, whatever you do, Craig, don't fuck up because you've got to talk for three hours, you know? <laughs> so is, it's, is that daunting? Because, yes, they're coming to see you, but they're also coming to see what's in between your ears, right? And, yeah. you know, it's, you, you, you don't ha you're not a magician. You don't have props and everything else. It's just you. Like, is that very intimidating? Does it, how, how does it make you feel? Yeah, it makes me feel excited. It excites me. It doesn't intimidate me, it excites me. Um, but I'm, I have a respect, I have a healthy respect for the situation and I have gratitude. I don't take it for granted and I realise it could go in a, in a second. Um, so I'm really uh, genuinely like, very thankful and, and grateful. Um, 
But when I step in and I do my, you know, here's the thing. I, and this is encouraging for people. Like I know at 53, I'm way better than I was at 43 mm. and way better than at 33. And <laughs> because I, I've never stopped learning and I've never stopped working on my skills and I've never stopped studying. Um, and I've always been, even now, I, I may not be, but I expect to be a lot better when I'm 60 um, because I don't, you know, I, I put myself under enough pressure, good pressure, to make sure that I keep evolving. And what does that look like? Does that mean um, more content or... Yeah, that, about yeah, yeah, yeah. That means, you know, here's the thing. When I was young, I used to give a presentation, Right. Hi, everyone. Here's my presentation. And that, it was okay. It was interesting. I was a bit funny. There are a few good stories. And now I try to have an experience with people where if I did the same workshop in inverted commas five days in a row with five audiences, there would not be one that would be the same as the other. There'd be similarities. There'd be a lot of crossover. But you know, literally, uh, I walk in and quite often I'll just have a 20-minute conversation with the audience now mm. about why they've come. <clears throat> and I talk to people in the crowd, why are you here? What's it's working freestyle. in your world? What's not working? It's just total freestyle. There's no plan. There's no structure. There's no, there's no you know, slides. There's no graphs. There's no videos. Um, and, um, you know, that kind of sometimes sets us up for the rest of the day. And I go, well... Well, I can, I can talk for 10 hours, but we've only got three. Mm. What do you guys want me to focus on? The head stuff, the body stuff, the life stuff, the fear stuff, the, and then, the, the change and, stuff, you know. And then do you tie in, because I'm assuming you have stories and experiences that you want to share with these guys, do you then tie them into what the topics are they want you to talk about? Sure. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great point. I mean, the thing about... What's good about stories, you know, if I'm talking about, say, which I don't talk about much, but let's say, for example, childhood obesity and the fact that I was a fat kid, you know, I could talk a little bit about, you know, anatomy and physiology and where Australians are at in 2017 and data and facts and figures and stats. But then I can talk about my experience being a fat kid at the year eight swimming sports. And all of a sudden, when you're talking about uh, an experience, uh, and you're sharing a real story, then you've got connection with people because people connect with stories because yeah. there's an emotional element, whereas people don't generally connect with information or data in the same way. Exactly. Um, I was going to ask what makes you such a good speaker, but I think you just answered that question. Would you agree? I think so. Look, I, yeah, I mean... Uh, I'm, a, I'm a storyteller and I really pay attention to the audience and, you know, sometimes sometimes it, when you're... I'm not saying I'm a good speaker, but when you are a good speaker, you have the ability to read the audience and adapt in the moment. Mm. Whereas somebody who's not a good speaker, that is, it's not real natural to them or they don't have the same experience. Um, they will kind of walk out with a, a, a set presentation and if something happens to rock that, they're stuffed. You know, um, I did a gig on, uh, I won't say where, but last week I did a few corporates and one of, one of the corporates I did last week, I was explaining a concept and in the audience, so there's about 250 people in the audience, a guy goes, no, nah, that's not right. Right? Oh, don't you I love shared that? Enough. Yeah. So basically he was a heckler and I was talking about... <laughs> doesn't matter what I was talking about, but he yeah. disagreed with me. He goes, no, nah, that's wrong. And I said, well, it's, it's not wrong. And I explained it. And, yeah. and I explained it so clearly that there was no way to not understand what he said. Mm. And even at the end of that, he goes, I still disagree. And, you know, you're thinking, wow, I'm glad that I've done this a lot of times mm. because I was able to just, you know, make it okay and move on. But somebody yeah. else who's you know, just finding their feet as a speaker, you get someone in an audience who basically is a heckler. Mm. Um, yeah, I've seen, I've seen people get thrown and, and their, um, you know, their presentation destroyed. I bet. Um, and, and, and I think that too is this, 
when they are inexperienced, and I put myself in that category, you do focus too much on the content. And as we've just finished talking about, it's it's not about the content. It's how they receive the content, which means yeah. are they being entertained? Are they comfortable? Are they open to you? Um, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. s- kind of a segue from that and I'm wary of time both your time and uh, and my recordings time so I'll start to wrap it up Um, segueing from from all these people that that, that, that come and listen to you speak and follow you on social media and whatnot what do you think is one of the biggest things that stops them from reaching their potential or just humans in general yeah probably one main thing that fear that's it. I mean, why, you know, you, like people are, <laughs> like whether or not it's procrastination or frustration or hesitation or avoidance or, um, you know, it's, it's or laziness, it, it, it generally comes back to the fear. You know, people, whether or not it's fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of looking silly, fear of not belonging, um, fear of pain, fear of discomfort. See, the thing is, you know, like we, we do all want to grow and learn and evolve and succeed, but the dichotomy is on the one hand we say I want to be successful, but on the other hand or at the same time we don't want to get uncomfortable. So mm. for me it's, it's largely for people it's about fear, it's about avoidance and it's about their lack of willingness to do the hard stuff. And so the thing is that, that becoming successful, a lot of the journey is just not very sexy. You know, it's, it's not fun. It's not convenient. It's not quick. It's not easy. It's not comfortable. And trying to sell that to people is an uphill battle, mm. you know, and, but it's just real. It's just true. And I always say to audiences, look, I can give you the bullshit, fluffy, let's hold hands and sing kumbaya version, or I can actually tell you the truth. And the truth is that sometimes changing your life sucks. Sometimes winning sucks. You know, sometimes personal transformation is messy and painful for a while. And I think, you know, that, that's what gets in the way for people. You know, we're, we're the quick fix generation. We love instant gratification. We want awesome and we want it right now. And we also don't want to do any. <laughs> that's right. Who wants change? Everyone. Who wants to change? No. <laughs> Who wants to do the work? Nah. <laughs> Can't you just give me the quicker version, Craig? Um, I, 100%. I, I got really clear on that at one of your seminars or maybe one of your DVDs or something like that. And, and I got that and no disrespect to anyone that writes comments, but a lot of the comments were, yes, Craig, that's right. You tell them, you tell them, that's what they need to hear. And, and, and I got to yeah. a point where I, and I was one of those people and I got, I got to a point where I thought, I need to stop being that yes man and just go, you know what, create, create the goals. And, you know, so I've got goals now before I'm 40 goals, they're called, um, you know, and, and, and that's it. And, and, I, and I'm in that journey. I'm in that pain. I'm in that daily, I call it the marathon. And I'm motivated by the marathon. I'm not motivated by the finish line. The finish line's the, yeah. the end result, but it's not the motivation, right? Much like someone losing yeah. 50 kilos or trying to have a better relationship or make a million bucks or whatever the hell it is. Um, the end result's the end yeah. result. But, but as long as you're motivated by yeah. that result, and, I, and this was so clear from, from one of your um, videos, uh, if that's the motivation, you're never going to get there because you need to find sexiness in the journey. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's the key. And, and the journey is... I mean, I think the journey is the joy because the journey is the journey is the classroom. You know, the journey's the journey's where you learn, grow, evolve, adapt, become better. You know, and you can't. You know, if you get the result somehow, miraculously get the result without the work, you'll never keep the result. Exactly. Yeah. Look at look at lotto winners. <laughs> right. Yeah. Hundred percent because they don't have that skill on how to make money or grow money. Yeah. Mate, you talked about fear. Um, I can't not ask you then what are you fearful of? What are you scared of? 
What am I scared of? What am I scared of? Um, I'm scared of, I'm scared, I don't know if scared's the word. Um, I guess if I'm being real and, well, I'm being real the whole time, but if I'm being self-aware, um, I guess doing something that damages my brand, like I don't want that to happen. Mm. I'm, I guess I'm uh, on a practical level, uh, personal level. I'm not excited about my parents dying because they're it. I don't have brothers and sisters and I don't have an extended family. Mm. So the, the, <laughs> you've got some musical accompaniment in the background there. Someone walking past. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess some real practical things, but I guess... Um, probably my main fear is that I don't, um, that I don't, not fulfil, but explore my potential. You know, I don't want to waste, I don't want to waste what I've got. I don't think I'm hugely talented, but I think I'm pretty good at getting the most out of my talent and I want to keep doing that. All right. And, and, and thanks for that honest answer. But I want to segue for, into that then. What does that look like? You know, what's the next 10, 20, 30 years for you? Um, What's your finish line? Yeah, lots of things. Well, my finish line is I, I don't really have a finish line. Like I think, so I'm 53 and I know because of what I do, there's no reason why I can't do this at 60 or 70 or 80. Exactly. Um, you know, because it's about talking and thinking, connecting, and it's not like a, it's a football career or something. So um, I... You know, I don't, I don't, the notion of retirement holds zero appeal for me. And it's not because I'm a workaholic. In fact, I'm the opposite of a workaholic. I hate work. Mm. Um, but what I do is, and I'm not being flippant, it is not work. It's not work. Like yeah. what, I'm, what I'm doing with you now is what I do some version of this most of the day. Mm -hmm. And I, I love it. There's nothing worky about what I do. And so uh, I would, my, if, I, if somebody said, here's 50 million bucks, but you need to stop working totally today, I wouldn't take it. Because wow. I would be emotionally, mentally, spiritually bankrupt by next week. Yeah. There's, there's no way I would retire because um, for me, what I do, money is maybe number 10 on my list. And that's only because I need money practically to survive. Yeah. You know? Um, and but the and this sounds bullshit, but it's hundred percent true. Like the joy and the satisfaction that I get helping people. That's not to say I always help people, but you know, for me, that's it's like it, it's literally better than money. And so you know, the future for me is just about staying on the path I'm on. There's nothing drastically I want to ch change. I'd like to talk to bigger and bigger audiences. You know, but I've already spoken to some very big audiences in my day. You know, when I worked on telly, on Channel 10, I was on every week for three years talking to a quarter of a million people and that was fun and that was an opportunity. And every week I do radio where my audience is about thirty or 40,000 um, and that's good. But in terms of there's nothing like a live audience, live audiences, it's like I guess if you're a comedian or you're a singer or something. You know, it's awesome to have that that visceral, physical, three D connection. That energy, yeah, for sure. That's great, mate. Um, I'd love for you to tell us about the uh, the, the the speaking tour that you're doing at the moment. Um, uh, it's called a high performance life, right? Mate, you there, mate? Yeah, got sorry, you, you just. For about thirty seconds. Oh, did I? Oh, it's, uh, it was yeah. amazing too. What I said, you missed it. Uh, <laughs> now I wanted you to uh, to tell us a little bit about the uh, high performance life uh, speaking tour that you're doing at the moment. What can people expect uh, when they come along? Um, so it's just so it's three hours. It's two to five, and it's it's where we talk about basically how we get how we. Get how we get the most out of us, how we get the most out of our life. Um, and I guess for people who are, 
uh, really frustrated with going around in circles, whether or not it's with their body or their relationships or their career, and how to break that cycle. You know, so a high-performance life is really, it's really about you just getting the most out of you. It's not about making the Olympic team or becoming an astronaut or curing cancer. It's about you uh, using more of your talent, using your time more efficiently, developing skills, facing fears, all that really normal stuff. And, um, you know, to make sure that we don't wake up in a minute and we're five years older and we're doing the same things the same way. So, yeah, and if any of that connects with people, then they'll, they'll enjoy it. I think I'm in Brisbane on the 27th of May. I might have yeah. to check, but yeah, it is. people can just go to my website. So my website's just craigharperoneword.net. Um, why did you get rid of your site for a while? Uh, that's a bit more complicated. That I had a business partner and there was a couple of little issues there that we won't chat about, but okay. nothing terrible. So, But I did need to change anyway because I got out of the blog and, yeah. and uh, so I just kind of had a bit of downtime for about a year. Um, but it was good because, you know, the, for those who don't know, I used to write a lot of articles or blogs and, you know, that, that was great, but, you know, you get to the point where that's kind of exhausting and the effort's not worth it. The return's not worth the effort. Mm. Do, do you think... Sorry, I was, I was about to wrap it up, but <laughs> yeah, you've got me going again. Um, are you happy you spent all that time on the blog? Did it make you a better writer? Did it make you a better presenter? Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm happy I did, I've done everything. Yeah, I don't resent it. Even my time on the gym floor where... I was grinding it out for years. I'm happy with that because it built something in me where, you know, like I have a real awareness of how good my life is now. Mm. You know, because, because I've had shit jobs, you know, I worked for four years in pubs getting punched in the face. You know, like I've had some shit jobs and I've done some shit things and, and you know, you get to the point now where you go, well, I, I have real awareness and gratitude for what I'm doing now and I realise how lucky I am to have uh, the opportunities that I have. Yeah. Love it. Craig, really appreciate your time, mate. I appreciate following your journey and sort of even though I'm a couple of states away, closely sort of holding on to your tail as, uh, as, as your journey progresses, I'd like to think mine is, is slowly making its way up too and you've been a big mentor so I uh, on behalf of all your followers uh, want to say thank you mate and thanks for your time today pleasure Matty great to chat man keep doing what you do I love it thanks mate talk soon see you buddy